Kriskis for Premier Guitar. I'm here with my new friend Dave. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing great. Great. Glad to be here in Madison, Wisconsin with the Eagles of Death Metal. Here on, I guess, the tour leading up to Zipper Down release, correct? That is correct, uh, October 2nd. I have it circled on my calendar. I hope you guys do too. Dave, tell me about this guitar over here. It's It looks like a Gibson Flying V, but it's not. Well, this one is. Oh, okay. We're, we're, we'll get to... Uh, we'll get to uh, Albert. This one was just... Uh, this is my backup guitar. This is an old... I uh, actually found this in my closet at my studio really? a few years ago, and it took me a couple of years to track down the owner. But uh, this is what I used to play all the time until I got a brand new Echo Park Albert uh, guitar from my friend Gabriel. And uh, no need to really play this. It, the other one doesn't go out of town, tune or break uh, strings ever. So, What's uh, the story behind this one? Do you know like a year or anything specific that's done to it? Well, you know, I don't really know a lot about it other than it broke in about 12 pieces once when I was playing it. Uh, out I of sat, frustration? Or? No, I, I sat it down and it cracked in half and then I barely kicked it out of the way because people were on stage dancing <laughs> and it broke into a few more pieces. But I think it's like a 70s, supposedly. Uh, I saw a picture of Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols with one of these as a backup uh -huh. on a Sex Pistols thing. So maybe a 70s. I thought it was an 80s, but definitely Sex Pistols weren't around in the 80s. So I don't know. I, I think this is a court pickup. This is a DiMarzio after the other court pickup died. I, I kind of put it together. There were a few things missing when I found it. But this was this is what I used for, you know, 11 years of of playing with Eagles, but the the new Echo Park is, is so fantastic. What do you like about Flying V's in general, just the body shape and the style and how they feel in your hands and how you play and the uh, just the guitar overall? Uh, yeah, I think I, I do. I do. It, 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 I play with a lot of different bands uh -huh. and with Eagles, for some reason, it really worked out uh, right for us. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Uh, when they asked me to play, uh, they didn't have a bass player at the time or we didn't have a bass player. And I was playing my Dan Electro double neck for a couple right. of tours where I'd fill in on bass for a song or two. And then this one just seemed like the guitar to take. It was really light and it sounded great. It was kind of lo-fi and, and cool for that, for what we were doing. Well, this is the Echo Park uh, Albert 58. It's, I guess it's an exact copy of a Gibson 58, except for better, uh, uses better parts. And the pickups are incredible. I don't know exactly uh, what he calls those, but uh, yeah, well, lines, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah, they sound incredible though, and this thing is just a monster. It stays in tune perfectly. It looks beautiful. It weighs the right amount of of weight to kind of have a little heft to it. And, and Gabe, he does a lot of the hardware too. And stuff. He does. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's fantastic. I mean, he makes incredible stuff, and he's we've been friends. He he actually started his shop. Uh, across from our rehearsal studio, oh, when, really? yeah, a few years Park, ago, yeah. yeah, and uh, I just love this guitar. I, I I love it. It's funny because the the other V has uh, like an old, almost like a SG neck on okay. it. It's really thin and yeah. small, and this is good chunky '50s Gibsony is it, style. Is that one you prefer, or I'm not I'm not real picky about what I play. You know, I, I, if if they. You know, I play a lot of different kinds of guitars, and they all, as long as they play good to me, I, I love it. But I didn't have any any problem getting into this one. It just felt there, great immediately. Is there any something special you do? I know that you play a lot of slide with the Eagles. Do, is there anything that you you do specific to set it up, or is it pretty much you just play it the same? No, I just uh, I have not done anything to this. He set it up, and I, it just rolls. Uh, <laughs> we we do use an interesting tuning. It's Spanish open G, so it's uh, e string tuned up to G, A down to G, D, G, B, and then down to D there. So, so that's on, on every song. Gotcha. So. What do you use for strings, like gauge or a brand? Uh, we use Ernie Balls. I use 10s, uh, okay. 10 to 52s. Uh, I used to use 11s, but I've, I'm liking 10 gauge. A little easier. Yeah, everybody keeps, uh, I'm even thinking about 9s. Uh, I found out that 10s seem to stay in tune a lot better. And then Billy Gibbons is using what, like sevens or something? Right, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I haven't gotten there yet, but <laughs> <Not> <laughs> but he says why work it, you know? Yeah. Uh, my friend Jim Normandy up in like outside of Portland uh, is making these beautiful aluminum guitars. This is the Aluma Caster, and he makes the pickups. They're split coil humbuckers, 
and uh, they sound fantastic. They're they're chromed, and I can't I can't remember what the what he calls this pickup. It's a new one that he just came up with, but I just got this last week from him, and I've been playing this quite a bit. Uh, Is there ever, specific songs that you're playing this one? That you I'm, grab play, it? I'm playing a lot on the on some of the newer stuff. I'm playing it uh, on Complexity, and I'm playing it on Now I'm a Fool. Just things that have a little more ring to them, yeah. and th this thing sounds great, and it just looks fantastic. Yeah. And what would you say, so, someone that's not familiar with an aluminum body guitar, like how do you hear it, or how, I mean, obviously it's light, but what do you hear tonally that's maybe different from a solid body? It seems to ring a little more, but strangely enough, it's not altogether different than woods. Strangely, have you ever tried these no, guitars? No. They're, they're, I love them. I, they're, they're really cool you know, necks on them that play really easy and precise, so I, I love it. He, I've had a few of his guitars for years and every time I, I've played them for a long time and I love them. They sound great, they sound great in the studio, but I, they do have a, 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 a bit of a ring, bright ring that I really like. So we're really lucky, we have friends uh, that are, you know, working all different, you know, companies and no one's jealous of each other. They are, they're all, basically all friends, and they like what everybody makes. So it, yeah. it works together. But um, Jess and I really love these uh, AES. I think they're 1500s or yeah, 1500s. Yeah, and and they're great. They're uh, split coil humbuckers as well. They play fantastic. They sound incredible. Um, I love these. I, I don't know if you're familiar with no. these. They're they're beautiful. They stopped making them for a while and. Both of us had um, kind of worn out some because we'd taken them on so many tours and, and, you know, we sweat a lot on stage and they were just kind of getting funky. And they found these and then they said that they, I think they're starting to make them again, okay. which is great because they're pretty affordable and they're beautiful and they sound great. They're really light and they just play great. And what do you use, uh, what would you grab this song, or song, what would you grab this guitar for? Uh, I play this on all sorts of different songs, you know, I kind of go back and forth. Most, most of the time I'm on the V, but I, I like this for uh, Boys Bad News or, or something a little more aggressive that's fun to throw around. Yeah. Do you ever have any feedback issues with the semi-hollow, or is it a hollow body? It's a hollow, but I, okay. I honestly don't. Sometimes, sometimes Jesse does if we're playing bigger places and it's turned up quite, yeah. quite loud. Some, sometimes a little bit, but we have like a gate and we get that all sorted out. Cool. All right. Well, should we take a look at your amps here behind you? Sure. The big stack. I put my buddy's uh, logo on there, <laughs> Maleko. Uh, <there. laughs> I just, I thought it looked cool for a minute. And uh, the OR50 is my favorite by Orange. It's pretty straightforward. You know, just a little bit of crunch and gain. Um, and then the Rocker Verb 100 I'm using as a backup, but I don't use this one so much because I just I really like just the straightforward of this. Because for this band, it's pretty pretty much just rock. You yeah. know, it's it's you turn it up. Yeah, I play a little cleaner than Jesse, so I don't have my gain up quite as high as he does. Uh -huh. And I use pedals to get the gain, yeah. you know, but for the most part, I don't really use a lot of anything. I, this is pretty much how I have it set all the time. You know, everything at about half, uh, a little more bass turned up okay. for me, and it sounds, fan sounds great. And would you use the OR50 on your other projects? I know you obviously play with Queens and yeah. other bands and stuff like that. Are you, is this pretty much your amp to go to? I, I do use it on, in a lot of projects as well. I, I kind of jump around. I'm, uh, some, I, I have a couple of uh, Supros made by Zinke that, that I like a lot for some of the bands. I use something that needs a little more reverb and yeah. Fender-y kind of tone. But these sound great in the studio. They sound great. And live, they sound... There's no, You know, you just plug in and they sound good. You don't have to really mess with it a whole lot. I think 410 and then what, 212 or yeah. 210? Yeah, uh, four, 412 and a 212. Okay. I personally like the 212s uh, better. Uh, I'm, I don't like a lot of... Like tonight, we're on a kind of a small stage, so yeah. it's stacked. But I mostly go for stuff at my ankles so I can turn it up a little bit and yeah. not get blown out so much. And is there any specific speakers you ask Orange to load in there or put in there, or is it just probably no. stock, maybe Celestion 30s? It, whatever comes in there is, is usually fine with me. I, I mean, I, I've never plugged into it and thought, oh man, this I need to change speakers. <laughs> yeah. And I'm honestly, I'm not real precious about any. You know, I'm not one of those guys that has to have 
exactly you know because yeah. it's rock and roll and we're playing clubs and you know and, and I don't know I think it's good that people are into it I just don't I don't know I don't know the difference honestly <laughs> <laughs> fair enough how about we take a look at your pedal board here man we can start with the the polytune too I just got that from our friends over at uh, TC Tobias and Tor sent me a couple of things to check out it's it's the new one it's and it's got blue and white, which I think is pretty yeah. awesome and sexy. And that leads into my crybaby, which, you know, is always, always on the board. I use that for getting a couple, a little bit of a different tones, you know, like if I want a little higher end yeah. squonk. And so stuff. you use it more, not just as a foot pedal, you use it actually to kind of set it? And yeah, well, now we have a couple of songs that we do use Wawa on, so before I was just kind of using it for tone, and now I'm, I am using it a little bit of Wah as well. Same thing with the Roto Vibe, we have a couple of songs, Secret Plans has a bit of a, you know, yeah, a yeah. little... Trills. Yeah, so I'm using it for that. And then our buddies over at Earthquaker Devices who make their stuff is killer. Um, I'm using the Palisades for my overdrives, and that thing for solos, it's, it, for me, it sounds so good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying that. It's a two-stage pedal, so are you kicking on the boost for the solo or the gain, or like how are you I'm doing, doing it? I'm doing gain one and this this uh, active side. Okay. I, and you know, like I'm not really a big gearhead. I just you know I find pedals. They they were. Uh, friends of friends and now we've become friends and they sent me a bunch of stuff I'm, I'm very lucky because with my studio people send me stuff to try out yeah and they sent me that and I I fell in love with it for especially for the for the solos and Eagles they cut so well it's really really nice and then next to that I have the ultimate octave from full tone um, I use that quite a bit on solos with with Eagles I leave the uh, octave side on and then just kick in the fuzz for for the solos so the red lights always on and then I pop in the yellow light whenever <laughs> whenever possible to really cut through and I love that for solos it just sounds so good I'm, I'm really loving that and then TC comes back in with the reverb unit the T2 and that's that's really cool I'm just I just got that as well when I got the tuner so I'm, I'm I got that and the um, the uh, the flashback and I'm still learning to use those but they both sound great so far I'm, I'm not having any issues they they sound great I'm really liking that and then Earthquaker devices uh, is that it's a great uh, delay with a reverb and I'm okay. using that quite a bit on some solos just for slap with just a tad bit of reverb in the background too what are you using the flashback for that you're not getting from the the dispatch I'm just I'm just using the, that for longer delays, okay. and I, I really like the slap on the dispatch, um, with with the bit of the trail off mm. reverb is yeah. pretty cool, and the flashback I'm using for longer stuff just when it gets a little trippier and towards the end of the set when you're you know you're <laughs> yeah. Jesse and I have guitar duels so sometimes the different pedals come into you know we don't have anything mapped out we just kind of go for it at the end of the shows <laughs> yeah. and see what happens that's why you always stick around to the end of the show folks always you got i mean you're never going to want to leave girls are still shaking booty so you're going to want to be there till the very end and then um i just met lewis from uh mantic and uh got the flex and that's a really crazy device it uh, and a, i don't know actually know if what it's what it's called other than it just does crazy ass effects <laughs> and i've been using that towards the end of the set as well for certain things and uh he makes great stuff and it was really nice to meet him in denver i i, I we talked a bit but i'd never met him and he's really cool and then uh when we were in portland we stopped by and i got this this screw tater yeah <laughs> that thing does some crazy stuff it, it's a bit crusher and it the noises that come out of that are fantastic. So I've only had that one for about a week, and I'm I'm really looking forward to getting that back home to the studio because um, I play a lot of keyboards too, especially synths oh, and stuff. Yeah. So I can't wait to see what the Mantic and that do with the uh, with the synths. I think it's going to be pretty pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, while it's down there and it's on my mind, is there anything specific you like to use for a slot or is that just a Pyrex? Uh, I do love these. I love, this is the mud bone. Okay. And I love these and I love the uh, Joe Perry slides too. Oh, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're both Dunlop and they're both ceramic and I love both of these. But my Joe Perry one got crushed in, uh, in uh, I think it was Vancouver and got broken. So I'm down to this. I might have to get another one of those. And then we got the radial sure shot just for a being uh, the the heads, but I don't really a b. You know, I just they're both on the whole time, and then uh, that's just for you know canceling noise or hum or whatever. Yeah. But they make great products too. I really love their stuff. But yeah, I wish I could bring all my stuff I have at the studio. <laughs> yeah. But I've got a zillion pedals, so you have to kind of pare it down yeah. to what what you can fit and what's really needed on this tour. Understandable. Understandable. Thank you very much for your time, Dave. Thank you, guys, man. Appreciate really it. Great meeting you and an honor. All right, we're here with Matt, the bassist. Matt, how you doing? Good. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Be nice to him. He's a fan of the rig rundowns, just like we are. Talk to us about your bass, sir. Um, it is a Fender P Bass Deluxe. Um, it's got a split, active. Passive pickups, little switch here, little switcheroo. Um, kind of go back and forth depending on the amps or whatever, you know, whatever strikes me, um, whatever sounds good at the moment. Um, Is there one yeah, that you prefer, favor, a bridge yeah, or neck? Um, um, in best case scenarios? Actually, I like a blend. I have okay. everything right in the middle, and j that way I kind of try to just dial in the amp, let the amp do. Whatever, and that way I have plenty of extra room gotcha. if I feel like I need a little boost, you know, a little, little, little high-end boost or something, a little treble, gotcha. cut through a little bit. Just depending on, you know, we're playing like a lot of different size venues, so just depending on the depth, how far back the amp is, sometimes you lose uh, certain frequencies, so I'll give it a little boost every once in a while, but um, yeah, so, so yeah, Maple Neck. Um, Did you? Is that standard with that one, or is that a special it is. bridge? This is all stock, actually. Okay. I haven't. There's been no need to change anything on this space. Uh, sounds great. Sounds great. Uh, 2010. Okay. Had it. Relatively. She's so got some miles on it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's, she's seen her way around. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. That's it. No, it feels great. And Still. assuming nothing goes wrong in a set, would you pl you'll play this all night then? Yeah, yeah. I just use this, and actually, uh, and um, I have another P Bass Deluxe. Davey okay. uses on uh, plays slide bass on "Wanna Be in L.A." Okay. So, so he's only playing on that one song, so it's also like the backup bass for me if something goes wrong. But yeah. Cool. And cool. let's take a look at your pedals. Yeah, check it out. So uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I get a decent amount. Uh, uh, the gain is pretty cranked on the amp, so okay. it's already kind of an overdriven sound that's just sort of constantly going. Um, you know, straight up Boss chromatic tuner, the old classic. Yep. Um, this is the Maleco Ass Master. That's right. Be silent. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I just like to say Ass Master. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this pedal. Yep. Um, uh, Paul Barker, Josh Hawley over at Maleco. Important. We actually just visited them the other day. Um, this is the germanium one. Okay. Sounds a little bit different. Um, just a little bit more smooth. It's not as uh, harsh. Um, but yeah, and you know, it's it's God it sounds so good on bass here. Anyway, um, and I always said uh, this is pretty much the sweet spot for me. Um, ass this way and you know once again depending on the night kind of mess with it but it sounds great you don't lose any of the low end cuts through nice but it's not too harsh okay. it's perfect for you know for most things uh and this is the mastertron by zvex effects it's more of a i use it more for a couple songs uh like the uh, new single out complexity okay um there's sort of more of like a like synthy bass sound mm -hmm. um, it's great for that same thing doesn't lose the low end cuts through just sounds nice and dirty yeah, and just gnarly kind of yeah it's it, it cuts kind of cuts your head off as you can tell <laughs> sitting right next to it and this little guy this is a new uh, pedal from Maleco 
same guys who make the Ask Master. And it's this crazy uh, bit and sample rate reducer, so basically just squashes the hell out of your, out of your signal. And I'm not even really using it to its full potential at the moment, because it, as you can see, it has an expression oh, yeah. input uh, uh, for an expression pedal. Uh, so uh, what you can do is you can assign uh, some of these parameters to be affected, multiple parameters at the same time. So uh -huh. you can really do some some really gnarly things, <laughs> uh, as you can probably imagine. But uh, let's just mess around first. So, gotta be careful. <laughs> it's basically chaos in a box. Get the idea. Yeah. Anyway, lots of lots of fun potential there, <laughs> and you know, going through a DI. So, Sean, our sound guy, can get a nice clean signal before any of that madness happens. So. <laughs> yeah, Orange has been kind enough to uh, get us uh, these this wall that you can <laughs> see behind you. Um, and yeah, and for for right now, um, we're just using one head going through both these cabs. Uh, you know. We, Kind of try different configurations and uh, like on some festival shows, I have like a, a 412 guitar cab. Okay. And I'll I'll just do like a little bit of gain, well, a lot of gain, but just turn down the volume. So it's yeah. just a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra juice. Almost like a big pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just even even more gnarly. Kind of cuts through. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of stuff that's kind of played up high, almost sort of like in a guitar mid range. Okay. So it's kind of nice to use a little bit of that guitar cab uh, boost but this thing sounds great and I like to you know crank crank the gain really once again just kind of depends on the proximity of the amp you know if you're getting too much gain just can pretty clean and so once you start digging in it gets pretty and as you can see it's only about less than halfway less so Everything's pretty much set in the middle for now. Like I said, it just depends on the night. The you know, settings change a little bit. Um, but yeah, it feels great. They sound great. Super powerful. Really heavy. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice like vintage sounding, you know, tube. Yeah, sounds great. Awesome, man. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Right, man. I'm here with Jesse. Jesse, how you doing? Awesome. Also known as Boots, J Devil, many other names. J Devil got me kicked out of church, so. Go with that one. Boots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about your guitar here that's over your shoulder. Well, first, I'm excited because this is my first gear interview. Really? Really. And I know this is going to sound corny or lame or whatever, but when you're a guitarist, you want those. It's like a, an, it's like a validation of something, if it makes any sense. Anyone wanting to talk to you about your gear means that somebody somewhere cares about it. And that we care. is awesome for me. So thank you. But Thank you. I'm holding my custom-made Maiden guitar. This is, uh, I guess, my signature guitar because it has lightning bolts instead of F-holes, and I ride the lightning a lot, so to speak. And I'm a red-headed person, so it's a red devil. And it's, uh, Maidens make the finest guitars, in my opinion, that have ever been made. They're, they're not a new company. They're just extremely unwell-known because they're from Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is handcrafted. They have a single... Uh, a master luthier that's literally physically in the middle of their factory in a box like a magic genie and everything is a uh, unique uh, Australian woods um, all the pickups are hand wired which is I don't use pedals yeah, yeah. and and I, I I find them sometimes to be dishonest live and I just don't have the time for it so I, I like things that allow me to plug and immediately get the um, 
just this side of distortion sort of uh, intensity mm -hmm. without losing the ability to be clean. Mm -hmm. And the master sound pickups, which is what uh, the pickups are that are placed into the Maiden, are probably the finest pickup you can find. And, and also a secret, because I find in these, this day and age, unless it, you know, nobody even considers spending $2,500 on a brand new guitar unless it's a Gibson. Mm -hmm. It just, the consideration just doesn't even happen. But you can't get these guitars for less than that because uh, they're all handmade and none of, nothing is sacrificed. And I also like the ability to split the pickups, boom. Do you do that much in a set? Only on occasion, because I'm the rhythm guitarist. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I write all the songs so that every part is a drum. So in a way, I actually play guitar like a drummer. Explain that real quick. When you play everything like a drum, uh, the parts will change. For example, if you, if you listen to a Black Sabbath song, Bill Ward's going, do 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 boom, trap, boom, trap. Mm -hmm. But in guitar, that could be, bing, bling, bing, bling. You just translate the parts, and for me, it's 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 the James Brown um, developed principle of writing songs. He made every instrument a drum so that they legoed into each other, and Legos fit a lot tighter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, than yeah. than Tinker Toys, and uh, I'm a hillbilly. I don't like to have to think too much. So if everything's a Lego, that's a whole lot easier <laughs> for me, man. And uh, is there anything, sp like, so this is one that you could buy off the rack, there's nothing that you've changed or done anything specific or oh, asked no, the guys? You could never buy this guitar off the rack. Uh, there's no guitars with uh, the Lightning Bolt F holds. And uh, my pickups are slightly hot rotted, just a mild customization, and that's in terms of the gauge of the wire that wraps the coil mm -hmm. to make the magnet. On this new album, I, I, I started playing baritone guitar. The baritone guitar is... It's a weird guitar. It was created to uh, simply be a pad for bass mm -hmm. in the days of one microphone recording. Mm -hmm. And, and surf guitarists used it and applied it, you know, obviously because of the longer necks, they can do lower range solos. I decided to use it on this new album in its traditional uh, use as a, as a bass instrument. And when I, uh, when I let the dudes at Maiden know that, they made me this badass <laughs> baritone that's got these very unique uh, it's got the pickups that you would most likely find in a in like a crappy K guitar in the in the 60s, like a mail order guitar, because that's what I wanted, uh, along with this, um, and the signature, of course, lightning bolt, and it's called the MS T Bird, the Master Sound T Bird. And what songs do you play off this on Zipper Down? Uh, um, Silver Lake, uh, the Deuce Kim Boogie, um, Oh Girl, a lot. And, and it just, all I do, it, I, I'll play it and it just, it just backs up the bass lines just to lift it up. And is it tuned B to B, A to A, or? It's, it's, a mod, it, it's a corollary to my G tuning. Okay. So because uh, there's three standard, there's three basic tunings that you tune a baritone to. And they're uh, uh, proportional tunings. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So a standard guitar is EAD. This would be, you know, two keys lower. Yeah. And so it... I think it is a B, D, or B, B, D. It's some weird, it's, it's got a lot of sharps in it. I just don't want to tell anyone. That's fine. Even though it's no secret, all you got to do is, it's the Keith Richards tuning, but he takes off the top string, and I just double those Gs. Gotcha. So you're tuning the E string up to G, which puts a lot of tension under the neck. So I would advise before you do that, you manipulate the uh, string configuration and you use a lighter gauge string for your E string. Is that what you're doing? That's, yeah. Well, Ernie Ball, I'm very fortunate that Ernie Ball will sort that stuff for me. Because gotcha. it's necessary. You don't want any undue tension on the neck. <laughs> I believe with, with, a, with a properly made amp or, or with the right equipment, the pedal, if you think about what a pedal is, it's an addendum. It's, uh, a, a, it's an enhancement. It's something that's meant to uh, enhance uh, a tone that we had come to know from simply an amp. Mm -hmm. Simply someone plugging into a Fender, a Twin, or someone plugging into a Silvertone, or someone plugging, you know what I mean? And a pedal is an attempt to enhance that. Never change it, in my opinion. I think it's a bad thing to change it. And I just don't want to have to need to do that. And the Orange Rocker Verb 50 and the OR50, the OR50 speci specifically is the is one of the most badass amps in the world. It doesn't even use English words. It just gives you hillbilly <laughs> symbols. You know what I mean? And and the symbol for gain is a fucking fist. What's not to love about that? It basically says, "You want the fist? Bend over. I'll show you." <laughs> or take it in the face. You know, it just depends. Not face melting, but face covering. <laughs> With the fist. 
with the fist, so to speak. So, and you got a second one over here. Are you running that one all the time, or is that, well, or is that a backup? I'm the instrument, so we, we like to... If you think a little bit about your front of house, your front of, your stage setup can actually enhance or assist the front of house. And so we like a classic, uh, hard, a classic rock panning scenario. And since I'm the rhythm guitarist, it seemed to make more sense to me to have uh, rhythm amps bookended around the drums so that from the audience's perspective, the rhythm and the drums are all in one spot. With the bass kind of taking a more lead element and then the lead guitar being separate so it's a lead so it can sit on top of the music literally which is what in my opinion is a good mix it's the core it's like it's a very balanced beautiful thing i'm going to ask you a really dumb question just because i always wanted to know now that i know you don't use pedals there's variations in your guys' uh, recorded material in terms of fuzz tones oh yeah even even from the uh peace love death metal to, to i to use now. two pedals so that's what i was going to ask how do you recreate that Without the pedals, I know that... I don't use amps in the studio. The only thing okay. I use bigger than... I use Gorilla GC25 in the studio, and I use the Zinke cigarette amp. And then I look at the pedal as a head. Gotcha. When I'm in the studio, the pedal is a head. And I actually have... Uh, I'm very fortunate to own an Axis fuzz pedal that belonged to Jimi Hendrix and a Mazrite fuzz right. And I use those in split... Uh, 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 corollary tracks, simultaneously recorded performances... Uh, one direct my, through my Maserite fuzz right and one direct through my Axis fuzz and then I mix those two together for my tone that's the secret to my tone gotcha. which is it, it, it's a fucking beautiful sound man there's nothing in the world like a Roger Mayer handmade Axis fuzz pedal and I guess that's why they're so expensive yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. especially when it was owned by Jimi Hendrix come on that's like some sword in the stone shit like I own the Axis you know what I mean I feel cooler just standing next to you just because of that. <laughs> well, I think that covers it, man. Guitar, amp, and go. There we go. Plug and play, baby. All right. Thank you very much, Jesse. Thanks Appreciate it. Check out Zipper Down October 2nd. I know I will. Thank you, guys. Another rig rundown.